Hello everybody. In this lesson, I will be exploring SQL select queries in a little more detail than I used in my brief introduction to SQL. The previous video in this series introduced some of the basic instructions in SQL that you can use to select data and perform data maintenance tasks such as inserting, modifying or deleting data. In this talk, I'll focus on selecting data in a bit more detail. We'll be looking at some of the tools SQL provides for building WHERE clauses that enable one to select data more precisely and how one can join tables to enable one to generate information that requires drawing on data from several tables. The examples in this overview use SELECT statements, but WHERE clauses also apply to UPDATE and DELETE statements, so you can use any of the instructions mentioned here with UPDATE and delete as well. Bad WHERE clauses are dangerous. If you make a mistake in the WHERE clause of a delete or update SQL statement, you run the risk of deleting or modifying records you didn't intend to change. It's a good idea, if possible, to first test WHERE clauses by using them in a SELECT statement before performing a delete or update. Remember, there is no undo. To begin with, remember that a WHERE clause uses Boolean logic. This means they operate using exactly the same logic as you would use in an IF statement in a programming language. All the regular Boolean operators that you are already familiar with work, and they work in the same way. Just remember that you are using field names instead of variables. The one new operator is LIKE. LIKE performs the same job as equals, but it allows you to match a pattern like any value that starts with the letter A, or any person with John in their name. This pattern is created using wildcards. Microsoft Access supports two wildcards, an asterisk, which matches any combination of characters, and a question mark, which matches a single letter, as in this example. Here, any single letter start to the word will match. So, bog, cog, dog, hog, fog, log, and so on. They all match. Any other combination of letters will not. So, no og, blog, clog, or frog. Let's have a look at this example using the triathlon table, which we used in the introduction to SQL video. In this statement, we're requesting first name, last name, and country from all the countries whose code starts with the letter G. The asterisk wildcard, the star, matches any number of any other characters after the G. In this example, that means that both GBR and GER will match. Often, a Boolean comparison will not be able to specify exactly which information you need with just a simple equals or bigger than or less than. AND, OR, and NOT provide ways of modifying or combining Boolean expressions to more precisely specify your needs. AND performs a logical AND. In other words, the Boolean expression returns true if both parts of the expression are true. OR, on the other hand, returns true when either of the parts of tr are true, and only returns false when both are false. NOT is useful when your expression is most conveniently expressed as an exclusion or negation, as in return true if none of the values start with A. This example shows a WHERE clause that, that uses AND to select a small range of records from the triathlon table. The first half of the clause specifies all the values larger than 9 minutes and 25 seconds. Notice the hash character used to specify that a value is a date or time. Without the hashes, Access would interpret the slashes as meaning divide and treat these as mathematical expressions. The last half selects all values smaller than 9 minutes and 30 seconds. AND 
means that only values that match both criteria apply. In other words, the intersection of the two Boolean expressions. The result is three records, selected from different points in the table that meet both conditions. The between and in statements provide an alternative to using Boolean operators that can help in some specific cases. You can use between instead of combining Boolean expressions with AND. Between enables you to specify a range of values in a conveniently readable form. The IN statement, on the other hand, works where you need to specify a set of specific values. IN has similar limits to a case statement in Delphi. It only works with specific values. It can't, for example, work with dates and times because the underlying format used for dates and times are real numbers. Real numbers, you may recall, have a margin for error. They are not a precise representation. This example uses between to select the same range as we used in the previous example, where we combined two Boolean operations using AND. Between specifies a range of values. Only those values that fall inside this range are selected. This again results in three records being selected. That is, only those records that fall inside the specified range. In some circumstances, you may need to ensure that only unique values are selected. The distinct keyword is applied to a column to indicate that only records with unique values in that column should be used. Remember that any values in primary keys are unique by definition, so you wouldn't use this with primary keys. The distinct keyword is useful when you need to find unique values in columns that may legitimately contain data that have the same values. OK, so far we've been looking at queries that generate results from a single table. Data is very seldom represented using just one table. Remember, SQL is designed to make it easy to work with relational databases, that is, data that is represented across several tables with explicit relationships between the tables. These relationships are established using the primary and foreign keys in the tables. Using these relationships, SQL allows one to join the tables and work with the resulting joined table as though it were a single table. There are several types of joins that specify how tables will, should be combined. The two most common are inner join and outer join. The inner joins define an intersection of two tables. One table's foreign key creates a link to the primary key in a second table. This intersection means that only values reflected in both tables across this link will be included in the resulting table. Outer joins define a union of two tables. All values from both tables will be included in the resulting join. In this course, all joins we'll be using are inner joins. Remember, an inner join creates an intersection of two tables. The inner join forms part of a select statement. This now has to specify exactly which columns from each table must be selected. It also has to explicitly state how the tables are related. You need to specify which columns from each table should be returned. Notice that the name of the table is included with the column name. This uses the, a similar dot notation to the one you should already be familiar with from working with objects in Delphi. The table is necessary as it is perfectly possible to have columns in each table with the same name. You also obviously have to specify which tables you are drawing data from, as well as specify exactly how those tables are related. Only records which share a one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationship can be used to define a join. That is, the fields have to share a primary key and foreign key relationship. Let's look at how this works in practice. In this example, two tables are used to describe data relating to the triathlon event. The first table lists athletes and the second table lists countries. The C-curve field in table triathlon is the foreign key 
in a one-to-many relationship with the primary key, P key, in table country. In this merge, we'll display the first name and last name from table triathlon and country from table country. Notice how the relationship between the two tables is specified using inner join. We can use this relationship to return results which merge data from the two tables. Well, this completes our look at using SQL to select data from database tables. There is one more section in this overview of SQL, creating calculated fields. Calculated fields are a very powerful tool you can use to process data and generate new information from that data. We'll look at that in the next video. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.